Good afternoon all, welcome to our thought for the day. It's very good to be able to communicate with you all again. Let's pray and we'll have a short Bible reading. Some words of Psalm 99. The Lord reigns, let the nations tremble. He sits enthroned between the cherubim, let the earth shake. We thank you Lord for reassuring us that you reign over our world at all times. Help us to come before you today with all humility and also with the expectation that you speak to us through your word again. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's continue with a little bit more of the book of Romans, following on from where we were yesterday. Romans chapter 5, verse 9. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if, while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Here's another big question for our troubling times. We face a virus that is leading to the loss of life. So how can we have assurance of eternal life in the face of our own mortality? We saw yesterday that God proves his love by reconciling his enemies through the cross of Jesus. Well, if we have been reconciled with God, then the big thing to grasp today is that God will certainly save his friends. Look at verse 9 again since we have now been justified by his blood how much more shall we be saved from god's wrath through him what does this expression justified by his blood mean well justified is a legal courtroom uh, term if you went to sunday school you may have been taught justified means it's just as if i've never sinned that is wonderfully true. But actually, it's even better. It's not just that God views me as if I'd never done wrong. He views me as if I've always done right, if I'm justified. In other words, God views us as perfect, as if we'd lived the life that Jesus lived. Yesterday, we saw we can be reconciled. Today, we see we can be declared not guilty, perfect in God's courtroom. Hold these things together and we truly are God's friends. So let me ask you a question. Which is easier, to make peace with your worst enemy or to take a friend home to tea? Well, if God has done the hard bit of reconciling us while we were his enemies, it will be easy for him to take us home to heaven. Verse 9 and verse 10 both say, how much more? That's the key expression. If God has done the hard bit already, how much more will he certainly do the next bit, which is easy? Jesus has shed his blood for us. So we'll certainly be saved from the wrath of God when he judges the world. So, how sure are you of getting to heaven if you were to die tonight? Give it a mark out of 10 in your mind. Then think about this passage. If we have put our trust in Christ, we are justified now. And the logic is simple. If we're justified, it will be easy for God to bring us home. As Paul goes on to say later, nothing can separate us from the love of God. It's possible to have full assurance of that, full assurance of heaven. He doesn't promise an easy passage through this life, but he does promise a safe arrival at the destination. Today, as we face again this coronavirus trial, for who knows how long, let us hold on to this. God 
will certainly save his friends. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the good news that we have in Jesus. We thank you that we can be reconciled, that we can be justified, that we can therefore be your friends and assured of a place in your eternal kingdom. Father, I pray for all who are listening, that all of us may have our trust wholly in you and know your peace today and in the days to come. Amen. Thank you for listening and God bless you again.